In this clip we will think about if and how many solutions a linear equation system has. So here we have a two equations in a two-dimensional system. Uh, you will understand that you can write them down in this matrix form, matrix vector form, or just as two equations. What we want to, uh, to look at is the link between the graphical interpretation of this equation system and the solutions and the uh, how we can use the algebraic properties of a x and b to figure out how many solutions they are first it's important to understand that in this two-dimensional system each equation represents a line in this two-dimensional system so this two-dimensional system will have two uh, coordinates, x1 and x2. You could call them x and y, or z and m, or p and q, whatever. You just need to be consistent. So here we call the, the two dimensions x1 and x2. In order to see that these equations represent a line, we will solve both equations for x2. And now co coordinate system will put x2 on the vertical axis. So what we get is x2 is equal to negative 2 plus x1 and x2 is equal to 2 minus x1. So you can see that these two lines here have different slopes. The first one has a slope of plus 1, the second of minus 1. And if you've seen lines represented in the uh, coordinate system, you will immediately recognize that as these two lines have different slopes they will have one unique solution meaning there will be one point in the coordinate system where these two lines intersect so let's uh, display these two lines here here we got the uh, the two equations represented graphically we have x1 and x2 on the coordinate uh, we can see that we have one line which has an uh, equation 1 here, which has an intercept of negative 2 and a slope of 1. So that's equation 1. And equation 2 has an intercept of plus 2 and a slope of negative 1. So the orange line is equation 2. And they, uh, these two equations present one unique solution. There's only one point in that coordinate system where the two lines intersect. And that's at the point 2, 0. Let's use the algebraic properties of A to figure out how many solutions. The two columns are independent, so you can't, one isn't a multiple of the other, so the rank of A is equal to 2. So if we have two independent uh, two dimensional vectors, then we know that adding a third will not add extra information. We can replicate the third using the other two, so the rank of A, B, if we add the b vector is still going to be 2. So that is the characteristic of a 2 by 2 system that, that has one unique solution. So A matrix A needs to have full rank, a rank of 2. Let us now look at a different scenario. Uh, let's draw up a different uh, two-dimensional system with two equations. So here are the two equations and here represented in um, matrix algebra form. So if we look at this uh, matrix A and try to figure out what the rank of matrix A is, then we can quite quickly see that the second column is related to the first column and in particular you can see that if we multiply the first column by negative 1 we actually get as a result the second column so in some sense the second column isn't extra information and there's only one independent uh, column vector so the rank of that matrix is equal to 1 what about the rank of a comma b so the rank of the matrix which consists of the first two columns a and a third column which is equal to a vector b so if you look at this vector b the second element is five times the first element 10 is five times two 
whereas in the green and yellow vector the second element is two times the first vector. So that is new information. It's a new independent vector, so the rank of a comma b is two. Let's reformulate the two equations in a form where we immediately recognize that they are uh, represent lines in a coordinate system. So here are the two equations. And what you can immediately see is that both these lines have identical slope. So both equations have identical slope. That means if we represent them graphically, they will represent parallel lines. In fact, let's just draw these two lines or sketch them on a um, quickfire coordinate system. So we'll have uh, x2 on the vertical, x1 on the horizontal axis. Uh, we have one line which has an intercept of negative 5, the other one of negative 2, and both lines have a slope of plus 1. So uh, these are supposed to be straight lines and they are supposed to be parallel. Um, we can of course see that there is uh, that they have these different intercepts and as a consequence of having identical slopes and different intercepts we can immediately see that there's actually no solution to this equation system meaning there's no point in the x1 x2 plane that meets both equations that makes both equations true it is the fact that both slopes are equal that is represented by this reduced rank, meaning rank, we have two equations, but the rank of A is only one. And that gives rise to the situation of two parallel lines. So here's a new problem, I want you to test yourself. So here's a system, um, AX equals B, and I want you to pause the clip and check whether this system has any solutions. So let's look at this. Let's first look at the rank of A. So we have two columns, the yellow one, let's call it A1, and the green one, the second column, let's call that A2. What you can see here is that A1 is actually the same as negative three times A2. So it's not really independent information, the two columns, and the rank of A is therefore reduced, it is one. There's only one piece of independent information, really. What about the rank of a comma b? So when we add our uh, vector b to this, now you can see that here the second element 4 is twice the first element 2, and that's exactly the same ratio as in a1 and a2, so something is slightly fishy here. In fact, you can, for instance, confirm that b is equal to negative 2 times a2, so the addition of b again didn't add any more information, the rank of this is still one, we only have one independent column here. So let's continue by solving both equations in our equation system for x2 to get nice line uh, representations. So the first equation here, if we solve that for x2, we get negative 2 plus 3 times x1 and if we then go ahead and solve this second equation 6 times x1 minus 2 x2 equal 4 if we solve that for x2 we get negative 2 plus 3 x1 so immediately you can see that these are actually exactly the same lines they are not only parallel as in the previous case but they also have the same intercept so Representing these two lines on a coordinate system, x1, x2 coordinate system, is um, quite straightforward. So we draw one line, intercept of 2 and a s negative 2 and a slope of 3. And really, since the second line is exactly the same line, we can immediately see graphically that here is actually an infinite set of solutions. Any point on that line is a solution. Let me make that clearer. Let me draw another second colored line on here, but it's exactly the same. So we have an infinite number of points that deliver solutions. 
So let's see how the same sort of principles of thinking translate to the three-dimensional case. So we'll start with a three-dimensional equation system. Now we have three coordinates x1, x2 and x3 or three variables x1, x2 and x3. And let's start with one equation. We can represent that again in our matrix slash vector form. It would look like this where we would say that this first term is a then we have x equals b. Now a turns out to be a row vector only and not really a matrix but a vector is a special case of a matrix so it will be a 1 by 3 matrix. Now this one equation represents a plane in a three-dimensional coordinate system. So what changes is we go from two dimensions into the three-dimensional space. We have these three coordinates. So let's look at this graphically. Here we have a plane in a three-dimensional system. We have x1, x2 and x3 on the axis. Let me just write this down slightly larger. x1, x2, x3. And our one equation represents all the points on this plane. It's a plane because we have a linear equation. Perhaps to make that more clear, let's solve this equation for x3, which is on the vertical axis. And if we do so, we get x3 equals 2 minus a half x1 minus a half x2. So x3 is a function of x1 and x2. We sometimes also call that a bivariate function, two input arguments delivering one output. And that is represented by this orange plane. So this is now graphically important to, to understand what this equation in a three-dimensional space represents. It's a linear equation, so it represents a plane. So let's move up one step and augment our equation system, which wasn't a system so far, and make it a system. We'll add a second equation. And I'll immediately represent that in our matrix form A times X equals B. Just now that A is a 2 by 3 matrix, so we have two rows and three columns. The first row is identical, identical to the one we had previously, but now we add a second row to the system. That means graphically this equation system is represented by two planes, not only one plane. Let's think about this graphically first. So it turns out that if we have two planes in a three-dimensional uh, space, there are three qualitative possible outcomes. And uh, we'll characterize those along a number of dimensions. Firstly, we will uh, represent them by a nice picture that hopefully helps our understanding. So we'll have a nice picture but then we'll also think about the number of solutions. We think about the rank of A and the rank of A comma B. So let's uh, plug in the pictures first. Here are the three representations. So the first one is two parallel planes Clearly, the number of solutions here are zero. Then we have two planes which intersect. They intersect along that line. So that has an infinite number of solutions on that line. The third case is where the two planes lie on top of each other and then the entire plane is a solution. Again, infinite number of solutions. So for the second and the third option, there's just an infinite number of points which meet on which both equations are true. So what about the ranks of A for these three cases? So the rank of A in the first case is going to be 1 and the rank of AB is going to be 2. The rank in this last case is going to be 1 for A and 1 for AB. So here the B vector didn't really add any information and we have a rank of 2 for A in this case, where the two planes intersect along a line. And it turns out the rank of A, comma B is also equal to 2. So we have a reduced rank A, so we have two rows, so the maximum rank could be 2, but the first and the third case have reduced rank because they have parallel planes. Right? So this case is sort of interesting. It seems to be sort of the most interesting case in some sense. 
but it still delivers an infinite number of solutions along that plaque line. So you may then ask the question, what do we actually need to get a unique solution? So if we have a three-dimensional space, why, why don't we have a possibility here of getting a unique solution? Well, turns out what you need is this. It's this green beast. It's a third plane. So we need the blue and the orange plane and we need a third plane. And this third plane delivers one solution and it's where the blue, the orange and the green intersect. Okay, so there's this one point. So what we need algebraically is we need a third equation and we need a third equation that is independent. In fact, if it is independent to both the others which are already independent because they're not parallel, then it turns out the rank of our matrix A, coefficient matrix A, is equal to 3. And if in a three-dimensional system that is the case, then we will have a unique solution.